How would I explain myself? Um, I, I'm a skateboarder through and through, yes. That, if, if I had to say one thing, yes, that's what I do. Uh, my first memory of skateboarding is, is using my brother's skateboard and riding down the alleyway of our house and then running into a fence and getting splinters in my hands. I wasn't really afraid to get hurt along the way. And I, I got some pretty serious injuries when I was about 10 years old. Um, I got a concussion, I knocked my teeth out, and, um, and it never made me want to quit. And I think that was probably a crucial moment in my career when I realized that I don't care, well, I don't mind getting hurt for the sake of learning things. Well, I think that that sometimes determines whether people want to do skateboarding seriously or not. The first time they get hurt, is when a lot of people quit. And um, if you're going to be a professional skateboarder, if you're gonna do it, like, you're going to get hurt at some point. And that's the moment when you realize, how much do I love this and am I willing to fight back to get into it? My first time skating on the street, that wasn't the time when I thought, oh, I wanna do this all the time. It was when I saw people out of flying out of swimming pools and that's when I said, I wanna learn to do that and whatever it takes, I don't care about other sports, I'm doing this. This wave breaks 24 hours a day, every day. And you know what, bros? We're gonna be the first to ride it. Uh, being a skater in high school in my day was not cool. You hid your skateboard, you didn't tell anyone you did it. Uh, people would bully you, harass you, skater fag. Uh, sometimes like jocks, the basketball, football players would pick you up and shake you around. And um, Yeah, it's, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it just wasn't the cool thing to do. People thought it was more like a kid's toy. So it was more like you play yo-yos. I didn't care. I had my crew at the skate park, you know. I found my own tribe and they were all different. They came from all different walks of life. They all looked different. They listened to different music and I enjoyed that. I liked that we, it set us apart. It defined us. And I didn't care about being, you know, the, the homecoming king. Speed. Uh, well, in the early 90s, it was very slow. Uh, it was hard to make a living as a pro skater, and I just did whatever it took. I would do um, random shows at the fair. Uh, I, would, I would be the special guest at a rollerblade show. Whatever I, whatever I could do to make a living but still skate. Um, I even started editing videos, not just skate videos, but promotional videos, because I, I, I knew how to do that. Um, but all through, I kept skating and eventually started my own company back then. I, some people didn't have that option. I was lucky that I still had some uh, opportunities in skateboarding, but a lot of people, they loved skating. They did as much as they could, but they didn't have those same opportunities. And so I was very lucky in that sense. Okay, everybody, we want to hear everybody in the house right now. Skateboarding teaches you so much about perseverance and discipline and self-belief and, and that's an example. I mean, I, I tried 900s for almost 10 years up to that point in my life, so or maybe more. Um, and so what people saw the first time I did it was only 10 attempts. I tried it hundreds of times before that um, and never gave up on it. And I think that that, that could just be a metaphor for Making a career as a skateboarder in my day, you just gotta keep trying and not give up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, look at this. Tony Hawk, everybody! Yeah, look at this. Do you know how many tricks you invented? I, I'm not really sure. It, it's it's weird because it, most of the tricks that I invented were on from the vertical aspect. So like, there's certain tricks that already existed, but I was the first one to do it up in the air. And so I, I don't like being like claiming a certain number. I mean, definitely dozens. I think that that it's very specific to learning tricks and techniques, and you can continue to evolve throughout the years. There's no there's no top way to do it and and i feel like in many sports there is a ceiling to how far you can go with it how fast can you run how many scores can you get skateboarding is more about the artistry and so people can learn all kinds of new techniques you can always ollie higher you can always go faster you can always do more flips and so it's this it's this canvas of possibilities i think it's a sport it's an art and it's a lifestyle and some people focus on one of those more than the others, but it always has all three elements.
It's freedom. Uh, it, oh it is God. definitely a self empowerment. The idea that you've created some challenge for yourself and you've overcome it. And there's a sense of community, but it's a very individual pursuit. So it's fun that you can skate with friends, but you all have your own styles, your own ideas, and you, you support each other. Uh, I, well, I, I was confident that we were making a good skateboarding game. Skateboarding wasn't very popular, so I wasn't confident that it would have big sales, but I was proud of it, and I knew that skateboarders would enjoy it, and that's all I cared about. I mean, I really did. I made that game for skateboarders to appreciate video games. Um, and then once it was released, it, it exploded, and it became more of a genre of video games, and it brought people into skateboarding that had never done it before, and I was, I was more proud of that. It changed my life. Yeah, I mean, once it got released and started to catch on, and then the second one was released, um, everything changed for me in terms of, uh, well, obviously finances, but in terms of opportunity and recognition and, and skateboarding in general. Suddenly skateboarding was at the forefront of, of what people were thinking about and, and participating in. Skateboarding will be making its first appearance as an Olympic sport. Skateboarding is an Olympic event. Included in the Tokyo 2020 program. Um, so my first reaction was about time. <laughs> I mean, skateboarding is more popular than most Olympic sports, so why wouldn't they have included it sooner? Um, I think it was more because the industry was not organized enough to do it. Um, but once they got organized and once they started to work with the IOC and work with the various bodies that do the sanctioning and run the events, then it, it happened. I understand that some people feel strongly that it doesn't belong there, but, but I think that they're not looking at how far skateboard competitions have come, including events like this. This is a serious competition with serious prize money. People have corporate sponsors that enter these events. The Olympics isn't gonna change any of that. That's already all set. So if anything, it's just a, it's just the same event on a different stage. This is exciting, brand new park. It's kind of a levels of playing field. I love how far skateboarding has come, and, and that Vans will put so much effort and support into skateboarding that they'll they'll provide a skate park facility and leave it there. I mean that that's a legacy in itself. So I've been really proud to be part of these events because of that, um, especially the parks in Montreal, in Sao Paulo, um, and now here in Paris, and the one coming up in Salt Lake City, like all those parks are there to stay for the locals. Um, and it's gonna grow really great skaters and great skate scenes. There are not enough skate parks, uh, for sure. I mean, that's why I started my foundation, because I saw a lack of facilities. But it's growing, and, and the, the, especially with the inclusion of the Olympics, people are taking more note and, and realizing they need those facilities, and, and places like this are gonna start coming up all over. I think that skateboarding has come of age. Uh, it, I, don't, I don't like to say win or lose, but I think that compared to 20 years ago, 25 years ago, skateboarding has overcome um, a lot of uh, stereotypes, and a lot of challenges to be something that kids actively do and participate in as much as they participate in other mainstream sports. So in that sense, sure, we won validation and recognition and support. And speaking about kids, what would be like your best advice to kids? Uh, only do this kind of thing because you truly love it. Don't do it because you're trying to get fame or fortune. Because if that is your motivation, if you reach any sign of, of money or of fame, you're gonna lose your motivation and you're gonna not, you're gonna be forgotten about very easily. You have to keep challenging yourself and you have to do it because you love it.